Okay, to the who I believe to be a single person, or rather a lot that subscribed to me, uh, I'm sorry, but why? I, okay, I guess. Anyway, this video is here to cover the basics of auto turrets. All creations used shall be linked in the description. This will go over some basic stuff on how to make them, my process of making them, and how can they be used practically and effectively. Now here we can see my first design. It is simple. Just counterweight on one side, guns on the other, uh, and just some fins. Now the first thing, well I have already gone over basic gun positioning and the basic concept in my first video, but the how to make these and make these effectively really all depends on how you balance them. It is surprisingly similar to balancing a plane. You have to dampen the whole thing to make sure it doesn't spin out of control, just like with the plane. You have to make sure to put fins, the farther out from the center of rotation, the more the fins are going to dampen said rotation. And you have to have it well balanced with the center of mass in a place that's sensible, and the place that you're applying force from, in this case to control it, in this case the guns, rather than the uh, controlled surfaces, have to be positioned in a place that makes sense. In this case, think of the guns as the tail fin. The tail fin will always apply a force to, well, the tail fin is supposed to apply a force straight back, which is why you put it in the back so the air catches it and pushes it to the back. And second is balance. Now, as you could have just saw, this is quite well balanced. As I was spinning it in circles, you might want to go rewatch that where it did not spin out. However, I'm soon going to show you how some creations do because their center of mass is not perfectly in line with the servo that they're on. This is both good and bad. One of the biggest problems with this type of auto turret is getting the initial lock. After that, it could do whatever. It could shoot torpedoes out of the water, planes out of the sky. As you can see, this one has an anti-air mode which has its own problems, which I'll get into. Now, as you can see, the fins on the side are were designed for dampening, and the brick of, of armor plates on the front was to act as a counterweight. However, you'll see that as I move it around, the counterweight still does not balance it out fully, as can be just seen by this movement. This is both good and bad. One, it means that it now moves in a very predictable way, and you can redirect it quite easily. However, it now means that it's not perfectly balanced, which means that whenever you move while firing, there's a chance that it'll get flung off target. This is my first turret that was actually combat tested and combat effective. Now, the biggest problem that this turret used to have, it's mostly been fixed now, is not enough dampening. Dampening from the fins smooths out the whole motion and the bursts of fire. However, it was not enough initially because the way that the miniguns work when they're out of ammo, they load up a burst of ammunition, they fire that burst of ammunition, then they wait. They fire in bursts, as can be seen. Now what this causes is if it syncs up with the, the wobbling, can cause it to oscillate more and more every time, causing it to fling off target. Hopefully this footage can give you a good idea of how accurate most of the systems are. Oh, and by the way, as you can see, on all of these, I use smaller guns as well as the main guns. Smaller guns which have larger detection area that they can actually target things. This one also has an anti-air mode. This one, I just wanted to see how impractical can I get it? The answer is very. Here, as you could see, I offset the miniguns firing. I added more guns because of the sheer amount of weight that the miniguns added because who would have thought guns are heavy? This is also a really bad design because the weight and aerodynamics are not properly balanced. 
meaning that depending on the speed, it'll either fling around one way or the other. It's fine having it unbalanced as long as it's consistent. And this is not consistent. It is relatively stable. Now, one of the biggest problems with having an anti-air mode is simply put, when I tested it in combat, planes would come in at an odd angle sometimes where it'd be not too high above the water for it to be ground mode, but too low for it to for anti-air mode. It aims right in the middle. This is the first my first attempt at attempting to fix the solution with getting the initial lock by putting a helicopter servo. This one is pretty badly balanced. It does not have enough air resistance for the dampening, so it often swings around way too much and it just is slightly too unstable. As you can see, a slight wobbling, that should not be happening. As you can see, even with control, it does settle down quite nicely though, and it is quite easy to get a lock. Now, the, to fix the issue I had on my first two minigun, two gun design of having them side by side and having them fire in sync, I set them on top of each other so then if one fires off of sync from the other, the net force is still in line with the pivot point. Otherwise, if they were side by side and firing off of sync, it would just spin it even more. So yeah, the, and because they're firing out of sync with a gap of, I believe, one second, if I remember correctly. Well, I mean, you could always just check the blueprints. With it firing out of sync, it's able to keep a very consistent force, very consistent damage. That was by far the most effective creation so far. Now, this, this is still kind of undeveloped. So when I create these creations, I often just go over the top with everything on my first model and then just sort of trim it down until it gets to a somewhat practical state. That's why you can see so many fins on this thing. And ironically enough, I still think it needs more fins. However, looking at this footage again, or re-watching it rather, it seems that perhaps it has too much weight rather than not enough fins. The detail is small, but I shall soon explain it. Now, as I was talking about it earlier, anti-air is a little bit hard because of the angle. Like all my other turrets, in ground attack mode, they could shoot out other boats or ground vehicles just fine. They could shoot out torpedoes out of the water just fine. The air attack mode works pretty well, but the problem is it's still rigid and it still doesn't have a full movement that it needs to target things in the sky. This was an attempt to fix that. Basically, it has, well, it's pretty obvious, it just has two axes. As you can see here, you s weight makes it decelerate and accelerate to aim at a target really slowly. Fins slow down, try to slow down everything to a zero and dampen everything out. Now this, as you can see, it accelerates slowly, but it also stops slowly. This is why you need to make sure that you can diagnose what's wrong when tuning. I was rushing this, and as you can see, it is terribly tuned. At this point, more fins won't even fix anything. You just need to get rid of weight, because again, it was slow at aiming at the target and stopping the momentum of moving the turret. I was trying to add more fins to fix that, as you could see, although now that it has a good lock, it's much harder, the problem is mostly solved. Now, okay, so this is basically the end of the video. These None of these videos are ever gonna be particularly long. There's probably going to be one more video on auto turrets where I finish up some more of the experimental designs, actually put them in production and into blueprints and hand them out to all of you guys. Uh, and then after that one video, it's probably going to be one or two missiles, sorry, one or two videos about missiles. And 
all that's the end of the video all i have left to say is to whoever was the one that subscribed to me you you should be doing something better with your time